Welcome to Home to Torah at the Ibn Abayt Midrash, where we will be discussing some of the most fundamental aspects of the world, of, of belief and in Judaism. And we're going to talk about the very, we're going to be using the very last verse in chapter 1 in Genesis. And God saw all that he had made, the Yar. The Yar Elohim et kol asher osso. Okay, God saw all that He had made. Hine tov ma'od. Did you know that? After God created the world, He said, "This is very, very good." Right? He said, "It's very good." Did He say that during each day of creation? No, but He did say it's good. So after each day, do you know which day He didn't say it was good? The, third. the second. Right. But it's close. <laughs> Closer than anybody else in the room because nobody else spoke up. <laughs> so the second day, why is the second day God does not say it's good? The waters were separated. So if there's a separation, it's not a good thing. What's good is when everything comes together. But on the second day, there's a separation. So that was not necessarily good. So God did not say Kitov, that it was good. Okay, so all the other days he did, and then at the sixth day, what happened on the sixth day that God said it was very good? Man was created. Adriana, you made it to the cyber world, because your name is now on this tape forever, as getting the answer correctly. Great. Okay, so God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and it was evening, and it was morning, the sixth day. Now, I want to point out before we really begin into the meat and potatoes, in the Hebrew it says, the era the evoker yom ha shishi. What's unusual about ha shishi? All the other days, it doesn't use the hey. Hey means like the, right? So it's the sixth day. All it says is yom echad, the first day one. Yom Sheni, Yom Shlishi. It doesn't say Hayom, right? It's or Hashishi. It does, it's only on the sixth day does it use the infinitive He of like the. Okay? So that's a very important thing. So we're going to discuss these ideas. The Kliakar is the manual for this class that we use to open our discussion. And he begins by pointing out a few things. He says, Afa Pish, Kvar Hiskir, Kitov, Bitsirat Kol Yom Yom, even though the Torah uses, meaning Hashem uses these words, Kitov, in all the days of creation that he uses the word Kitov for, Mekom Mekom, Chazer Khan. Nevertheless, it's like there's a review, there's a, a summary of everything on the sixth day, because the, the, the creation is complete. And he says, Hine tov. The word hine tov. Actually it says tov mode, but hine. What's the word hine mean? It's like hine me. Remember we used to, all, st all used to meet at hine me? It means behold. It's like an expl exclamation. Behold. Behold it was good. After the Yetzirah of Adam, after man is created, behold, it's, it's good. Loharos, to teach us what? What is the most important lesson? The entire creation, from day one, from the moment of creation until man was created, everything that came before man was created for man. It's for, this world is a tool for us. It's, it's for us to use. Okay, the question is, how do we use it? Are we going to build it up, or are we going to destroy it? Right? But it's, it was given to us to use. Okay? A very important point. Kitov, even though all the previous days, except for the second day, it says Kitov, for it was good. Nemar al Shem Ho'atid. Now, this is, you have to break your ears to hear this. It's the, when it says in day one or day three, four, five, for it is good, what's the word ki mean? It really, key can mean many different things. You have to know the context of the verse. 
But anytime key is used, it's not a definite. It could be if, it could be when, um, it could be since. It's not necessarily a permanent like it's going to be. If it will be. Okay, very important. Therefore, what the clear car is about to tell us, and this is something that if you didn't know this, you have to be holding on to your seats, put your seatbelt on, we're going to be blasted up, right? And this is going to be the lesson we're going to hear over and over again. When God created the world, He created on condition that somebody, one of the 70 nations, or 71 nations, one of the nations, one of the peoples that He created would accept His Torah. And we all know there's only one nation that accepted his Torah. But he offered it to everyone. He offered it to the world. Only one nation, the chosen nation, his firstborn son, accepted the Torah. And what day was it that they accepted the Torah? The day of the revelation. But what was the tarikh? What was the date on the calendar? The sixth day of creation. And I'm already leading into why there's a definitive hey. Already from the very beginning of creation, he created the whole world for man on one condition. That somebody step up to the bat, step up to the plate, and accept the Torah. Okay, and you know what generation? Which generation was it? Yes, it was Moses' generation. That's, but which number generation from the beginning of creation? It's going to play a very significant part in our discussion tonight. So you can make an easy cheshbon, an easy calculation. Right? From Adam until Noah is how many? Ten. Ten. From Noah till Abraham is? Ten. Ten. Okay, so you've got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Levi, Amram, Moshe, six. Twenty-six generations. What's so significant about twenty-six? Adriana, God's name. Yud, He, Vav, He. We don't pronounce it. I'll explain another class. Okay, but <clears throat> it is the gematria, the value. Each letter in Hebrew has a value, a num numerical value. It's 26. Okay, it's going to come up again in the class. We're just getting here. So he says the word kitov throughout the five days of creation that it's used, or the four days that it's mentioned. It's about something to do with the future, as if everything's hanging. It's in doubt. Avalo hayu adayin bimluim. But there was no fullness and goodness until man was actually created. Because everything was created for his account. And there's, if you want to look this up, I didn't give this in the source sheet, but if it's in Job 28, verse 27, it says, Azra of Yisapra. It's, it's like a play on the words there. Then he saw and he proclaimed, Hine tov ma'od. Here our verse says, God says, Behold, it was very good. Once man was created, then everything he prepared was all for man, and then it had a purpose. Up until man's creation, it was only in potential if man would exist and be created. Vetedah, and you should know, Kiyesh. Hefresh bein kitov, ubein hine tov ma'od. He clearly says there has to be a difference between the words kitov, which is used throughout the first five days of creation, and hine tov ma'od, right? For it is good, and behold, it is very good. You have to agree there's a difference. So what is the difference? So he begins by telling us, lefisha lashon ki, if you look up in any dictionary the word ki, kaf yud, has many definitions, and I gave you a few, whether it was if, when, since, perhaps. Ki misupak. It is, the language itself brings forth a doubt. Ki lu vadai, as if it's not a certainty. Sharei, the koma kom lashen ki, so now we understand that the word ki is always used on a doubt. So, it's also related to a time, as I said, when, if, since. There's all, it's like, it's dependent on time itself. 
And he uses a few examples. If you look in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1, or Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 14, we have the parshot ki teitze, or ki tavo, when you come into the land, when you go out, right? All these, the word ki has to do when, when you go, or if you go, okay? So what does he really want to say when it says, the yar elokim kitov, that God saw that it was good, meaning... During the first five days of creation, whenever Kitov was used, it means that God was looking forward to a time that the good would be revealed. The ultimate good, which means man. Okay, all these are in the process so man could use. The world was created so man, okay, Chaim doesn't agree, but it's okay for now. That the world is the toolbox, right? That man should benefit, whether, I don't know if you're vegetarian, but... Um, <laughs> then I get it but you know it's to be used even, even animals even if you're not a vegetarian uh, they used for plowing right they were used right even if you didn't eat them you could plow with them right and if you were cold if you found a dead animal you can always take his skins and use it for clothing you didn't have to kill an animal okay avahine tov but once we use the word behold it's good it's teaching about a vadai, and that's what's used by man's creation. Hine to, hine tov ma'od. That's absolutely, certainly a goodness. So Chazal tells us in the Medrash, did you know when God wanted to create man, he got into a dialogue, I'll even call it a, a disagreement, with the angels? The angels said, why would you create this being. He's only going to sin, right? He's going to disappoint you. <laughs> right? God wanted to create us. So the Medrash says, He had an argument with the angels. Whether he should create man or not. The truth is, logic dictates that man should really never have been created, right? Because we're only going to sin, we're only going to make mistakes. It's not going to be such a good outcome necessarily. But you know what would happen? By the time the sixth day of creation comes along and God's about to make us and he has this discussion, that means everything prior was all in vain. Everything that God created would have been for naught. And it was only for man to use. Except Chaim doesn't agree, but it's okay. Lechak ne'mar bem kitov. That's why it says kitov. It was like not sure. It was a safek until man was created, whether man would be created or not. A mori al safek. Aval kishenivra adam. But once man was created, az nasu vaday tov. Then certain tov was created. Lechak ne'mar. And that's why it says, After it says, God had created everything. He saw all that he created, and behold, it was good. The language of Hine is also t- talking about time. But what, it, what time? The now, not the future. So the key represents perhaps looking forward to some time in the future. But the word Hine is now. As we saw, whenever God calls out and one of the Avos says, Hine, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here right now. I'm all yours. That's what it means, Hineni. I'm all yours. Shabo Nivra Adam. Meaning, right now, in that time, he created man. Aznir Lumafreya Matovam Umayafyam shall call Hanimsim Hakodmim. Okay, so then it was like lit- retroactively, once man was created. How good all those ketoes all were not anymore a suffolk or a doubt, but it became vada at that point. All the goodness that God had used created the first five days, five and a half days of creation until man was created. Now, v'hoisif kan ma'od. It doesn't just say hine tov. Behold, it's good. Behold, it's very good. Ma'od. 
the word ma'od does not appear anywhere before the cre- creation of man, before the sixth day. That teaches us that through man, this is, becoming, this is going to become good. And how do we know that? Wait till we hear this. You're going to flip off your chairs for those that are sitting down. For those that are standing up, you're not going to flip. <laughs> the word ma'od, mem ayin dalid, is the exact same letters as man. Aleph dalid mem. God, man is very good. Ma'od. Man himself. This, right? If you have any doubt, our, our sages teach us that we're created with a pure soul. Yes. We're not born in sin. We are born <laughs> in purity. Purity. We're created in the image of God. You know what it means to be created in the image of God? No idea, right? God is just un- unfathomable, uncomprehensible. But it really means that we have a potential that we don't even know that we have to do good and to be good, to be like God. We're told, we're taught, we should imitate God. Okay? Yesh Lafari Shaul. Oh, you can actually explain this even further. Okay. Kamashal Kimshal Hamacha Basar Vadagim. It's try to imagine you're eating what? Meat and fish. Where am I going with this? Do we eat meat and fish together? We don't. Right? We do not eat meat and fish together. We eat meat, then we eat fish. Or we eat fish and then we eat meat. It's not the same as uh, milk and meat. That's forbidden from the Torah. We have to wait a certain amount of time. After, meaning eat, eat, after eating meat before we eat milk. But you can eat one after the other when it comes to fish and meat, but we don't eat them together. <clears throat> each one individually, I mean, even when God created them, right? Each one tastes good, right? Meat tastes good. Fish tastes good. What if you made meat and fish together in a stew or, I don't know, <laughs> It wouldn't taste very good. Now, I don't know. I mean, we're not used to it. So maybe, maybe there's a society or a culture that eats meat and fish together. Is there such a thing? We can look it up on Google later. Or if someone wants to write a comment about it, they can send it in. Okay. But he says, Aval im yit'arvu, But if they become mixed together, yitkakalu. It's, gonna, it's not going to taste so nice. Aval elu hanivrim. But these creations that God created. God did create fish. And he did create animals. Meat. Lo zu shayu toizin kol echad b'fnei atzmo Ela afilu b'tsei rufim yachad kulam hayu gam kein tovim So it's true that, um, right, it's not good that they're, each one is good on its own. Together they're mixed would not be good. But once God created all them, he's looking over his whole creation and he sees them, even though they're mixed. We're not talking about eating them, we're just talking about his creation. They're all good. And that's why it ends up saying, all which Hashem created is very good. So it's not just about man, but it was also going back on all the creation that he created for man. Okay, so it says, Yom Ha-Shishi. I mentioned there's a definitive He. So the clear card points out, Hoisith He B'Shishi. There is this additional He by the sixth day you don't find by the other days. Meaning to tell us, Shatanai Hisna Kreshbarhu. God made a condition. He actually put into the creation of the world a condition. Now I read this and I think, okay, the hay, the hay is five. How many books of Torah do we have? Five, right? Chumash. So God made a condition with creation that it's all good on condition that somebody, anybody, would accept the Bible. It seems to be only the Jews that accepted the Bible. We're talking about the year 2448 year, years from creation. So we're all going back 3,003, you know, 3,800 years ago already. Okay. Oh. Kulchem tluyim ad yom hashishi, or 
everything, all the creation is hanging until the sixth day of Sivan. What's so great about the sixth day of Sivan? That's the day that we receive the Torah at Mount Sinai. That's Shavuot. That's Pentecost, as they say in other languages and religions. Ki hey, and what is the gematria of hey when you spell it out? Hey, Aleph, six. In other words, the, the normal letter hey is five, as Yonatan said. But when you spell it out, it's hey, Aleph, hey. So now it's five and plus one is six. So even the hey itself is six. And that is b'melua oila sheish. When it's in its fullness, it is six. And what's the reason? Okay, now this is going to get a little spooky. Ki helyoni v'tachtonim heim shnei afachim. What we call the upper worlds, we'll call it the spiritual worlds. And then when we have down here the lower worlds, which is the more physical worlds, they're very opposite each other. They're like, they really repel each other, even. The only way to fuse together the spirit with the physical world is through some intermediary. Okay? What do you think we're going to? What's the intermediary? Boy. Man. Man. Man is the intermediary. Because we have a soul. We have a soul that's spiritual. And we have a body that's physical. But what is the glue? What is the... Not just any man. It's, this is not just for any man. You have to have some ingredient, a catalyst that will enable the physical and the spiritual to fuse together. And that's the Torah. Okay? Watch what he says. Now we know, first of all, let's get this down, right? There's two worlds. There's the spiritual world and there's the physical world. And they're very opposite. They really repel each other. But there is a, a, a somebody, there's a somebody, there's a something that could fuse the, the, the world, those two worlds together, and that's going to be man, and that's through his acceptance of the Torah that it's possible. So he says like this, Ki el yonim taktonim heim shnei fachim. There are two opposites. Lo yiskaimu ki imal yidei eze em The only way they can be fused together is through some intermediary. Hamitzaref u mechaber shnei chalakim hafchiim elu. And they fuse and they connect the two p opposite things together. Vizel Adam. This is man. Sheesh Bochelek Gashmi. There's a physical part of him. Vechelek Ruchani. And a spiritual part of him. And if you look in Job, I don't have this on the uh, source sheets, but if you look in Job 31, verse 2, it says, Chelek El Maal. It's a very interesting verse, um, but uh, it's, it means part of man is part of the portion uh, uh, above. So let's look it up. I like this verse. So this, as we said, it's Job 31.2. Okay, so it says like this. Why then is this my portion from God above and the legacy of the Almighty from on high? This is Job admitting that he has a portion of God in him. Okay? And that's what we're going to say is the, the spirit is a chelik portion of Elokai, God from above. That is within each and every single one of us. Uh, the, the ability to remain immortal meaning the ability for the, the fusion between the spirit and the, and the physical can only happen, it's dependent on the receiving of the Torah, Shere Umos. Now he uses the word Umos, and we're going to talk, because we have many Bnei Noach, we have many righteous Gentiles who sit and learn Torah with us, okay? And people who may want to convert one day, if they have the ability. So he's, he says something that is absolutely striking. But I want you to know that if you are a true Bnei Noach, meaning you've accepted 
that the Jews received the Torah at Mount Sinai. That this, that they received the Bible, they received the Torah at Mount Sinai. You understand that this is a godly work. And you do your best to fulfill the mitzvot for, that are in it. Meaning the seven basic principles plus any additional principles you want. You get that whole thing, you're on a whole other level than the level we're going to talk about. And I'm going to show you how. Watch what he says. Fine. Behold, the, the nations, the nations, Asher lo noga aleim ura Torah, in which the light of Torah does not shine on them. We cannot be talking about a bnei Noach who's accepted the Torah. Okay, so get that clear. We're talking about a Gentile who the Torah, they never accepted this. Okay, a ben Noach, a righteous Gentile, has accepted this. So we're talking about the nations who have not accepted it. Nimshulu kebehema. They're compared to the beasts, the wild beasts, the chayos ha'aretz, and the, the animals on the earth. Now, if, if you don't believe me, would you believe King David? Look in Psalms, that's Tehillim 49.21. Psalms 49.21. You know what King David says? Man is glorious, but if he understands not... He is likened to the silenced animals. Okay? I will see the Hebrew. It's Psalms 4921. Uh, Psalms 49. Here we are. I like all the interpretations for the hay on the beginning of the, the six. The word six on the sixth day. But I think it's much more simpler interpretation. Which is that that's what you do after the six days of work. You make that sound you know, you finished the week. Okay, Jonathan, what are you asking, sorry? You make that sound, don't you, after six days of work, when you've when you completed your... Oh, uh, Friday night, right before Kiddush. How about, yeah, ha. Okay, here. Adam bikar v'lo yavin nimshal kebehemos nidmu. That's what the verse says. He's compared to animals. If a person does not understand, man is glorious. Man is very precious. That's what it says in Hebrew. Adam yekar. Right? Like the kli yekar. A precious thing. Velo yavin. But those people who do not understand. Nimshal. They are compared to. To what? Kebehemos nidmu. Okay. Now. If that's the case. Im kain. If the Jewish people had never accepted and received the Torah, there would never be that intermediate. There would never be an intermediate that could simply receive these two opposites, meaning the spirit and the physical, to be combined. It's only through the receiving of the Torah. And then since God made this condition on the creation, He like put it into the molecules. Every atom in the universe understood that if the Jews did not accept the Torah, they would just vanish. The whole world would revert back to chaos and void like it was before in the first, first day of creation. Va'atashivenu. Don't respond, He says. Min hazman shekode matan Torah that the whole time before matan Torah ki leolam hayu ba'olam tzadikim oiskim b'Torah. Did you know that? Did you know before the revelation there were people, non-Jews, learning Torah? Well, what's Torah? The Torah is God's word. God spoke to Adam. He told him certain mitzvahs. Spoke to Noah. Gave him certain mitzvahs. There were righteous Gentiles. The world existed for those 26 generations because of the righteous Gentiles. <laughs> Listen to his words. Ki le'olam hayu ba'olam tzadikim. There were always righteous people in the world. Oiskim b'Torah. Kenoach. Like Noach. Shame. Shame is one of, that's just how the Semites come. Shame is Noach's son. Aether. It's Noach's grandson. Avos, 
Who are the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? The Dugma Sam and other people like them. So you had righteous. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were not Jewish. They were righteous Gentiles. They were B'nai Noach. Okay? Haya imahem Hashem Hagado. And you know who was with these people? Noach, Shem, the Aver, these righteous Gentiles for 26 generations? God. That, he was holding them together, the number 26. Their relationship with God kept the world going. That's exactly why the world survived for 26 generations. Below Torah Beklal Hamon, without the masses keeping Torah, it was just individuals keeping the Torah, whatever Torah we're talking about, the Torah, the Torah of God, the law of God, their righteousness was keeping the world going without the masses. It's, there was only one nation, right, at Mount Sinai that accepted the Torah, three million people. And if you want to add the air of Rah in the desert, accepted the Torah. It was the first time in history you had a mass movement, a revolution, a religious revolution. You hear me? A religious revolution at Mount Sinai. Now it wasn't just an individual. It wasn't just a righteous person. It was a massive amount of people. A whole nation. <coughs> but after the... This is all theoretical because there was an acceptance. But he's going to claim that after the 26th generation, Shanishla Mispar Hashem, once the name of God was complete through the 26th generations, Lo Hayakoach B'Yechidi Hador La'amid Ha'olamos. There was no ability or power or potential for individuals to carry the weight of the world on their shoulders. That's gone. Okay? It's only through a massive nation. Kim al yedei kabal satara. Except through, if a nation would receive the Torah. Lothikach, oisik b'tor. Therefore, anyone, and I'm telling you, a righteous Gentile who accepts the Torah, who's involved, who's oisik b'torah, and is only being a righteous Gentile. If you're not a righteous Gentile and you're oisik b'torah, you have a big problem. But okay. So he says, if you're oisik b'torah, Mesim Shalom the Pamalia, you cre you give peace to the heavens, you're creating peace in the heavens above. Oh say shalom bim romavu ya say shalom alayhu. When you're doing the right thing, learning Torah, doing mitzvahs, you're creating peace in the heavens. Shalmala Vishalmata, as well as you're creating peace here on earth. We all we all want peace on earth? Yeah? yeah? Let's do it, man. We can create <laughs> peace on earth. Let's all accept the Torah together. Okay, he explains, he also speaks about this in um, uh, Parsha Sa'azinu. Okay, we're not going to go there. Uh, Why did it take six days to create the world? Why? You know that God could have blinked if he had eyes? If he had eyes? If he had lips, he could have... Oh, he did speak. I mean, but first of all, why did he have to create it in six days? So he's going to tell us, why six days? <coughs> so the Mephorshim explained, this is a hint, that the God wants us to know, the Torah wants us to know, that the world will stand. There will be three groups of 2,000 years. Okay, so you have to be sitting down for this. And the, the end of the year 6,000 will be Shabbos. It will be an eternal Shabbos. Some say it's within a, th a thousand years. And then it goes into a whole other sphere. Okay, so we're talking about three groups of 2,000 years each. So he brings a few verses here. And he says like this. Um, there's going to be 2,000 years of chaos that's before Abraham do you know when Abraham uh, he was born in 1948 1948 from the day of creation so he was 52 when he accepted the Torah when he recognized Hashem according to some opinions he was younger according to other opinions he was older but the Medrash explains at 52 specifically so that means at the year 2000 that he accepted the Torah Keneged Zeyesh Shnei alafim Interesting. 
in that verse, uh, Genesis 1 2. Now the earth was astonishingly empty, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So, the world was chaos. So, that's the first 2,000 years. There's two Alephs in the verse. I'm going to go through two more verses for the other 2,000 years. There's also two Alephs in each one of these verses. That's very unusual. You either have many more or you have none. But anyway, there's two, ver- two Alephs in both those verses. The next verse. Connected what? The first 2,000 years are called chaos. Then once Abraham accepted the Torah, there's 2,000 years of Torah. Okay? 2,000 years of Torah. As it says in the verse in Exodus 13, verse 9, in order that the Torah shall be in your mouth. It's 13, 9. And it shall be to you as a sign upon your hand and a remembrance between your eyes. Do you know what this is talking about? It's talking about the tefillin. Those black boxes, those Jewish people put on their, their bodies during the daylight hours in order that the law of the Lord shall be in your mouth that's the Torah that's the Torah so there's two olives in that verse for with the mighty hand the Lord took you out of Egypt okay and then there's going to be 2,000 years of Mashiach okay and you can find that in Genesis 49 verse 10 it's talking about that um, Shiloh the scepter shall not depart from Yehuda, nor a student of the law from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him will be a gathering of the peoples. There are two Alephs in that verse. Aleph means a thousand, by the way. It's not just a, it wasn't just a, a cute thing, there's two Alephs, <laughs> right? Aleph is a thousand. It's spelled exactly the way the word Aleph is spelled out. Okay. And um, he says, this is all correct. Okay, so he explains there's other Meforshim that explain how the 6,000 years are parallel to six points, not three points of 2,000 years each. But everyone agrees. Everyone agrees the world's only going to last 6,000 years. So I don't know about these climate change people. You got nothing to worry about. The world's going to end anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's coming to, coming to an end. But it's going to be a good ending. So, you know, you're panicking for nothing. But you do have a responsibility to take care of the world. God gave us the tools. We take care of it. We cannot mess it up and destroy it and let oil leak and, you know, be irresponsible with, with litter and pollution. So maybe this is what Yonatan's referring to. Yesho Mrim. Lechach hoisif hei b'shishi. Another reason why the hay is added to the word Hashishi, the fisha oilam nivra behe. Did you know that you, there's a name of God, Yah, Yud and He? Okay, with the Yud, God created part of the world, and with He, God created part of the world. It says He created the world with He. So, which part of the world? The physical world. The spiritual world He created with the Yud. Uh, afterwards, the Acher, Gamar Hamalacha, after, this is actually also what Yonatan has to be thinking, after Hashem himself completed, after six days, he's already, it's Friday afternoon, he himself laid down his tools, he placed his tools back in the toolbox, put the lock on it, you know, you close your locker after Friday, you go pick, get your check, and hopefully you don't go to the bar, Right? <laughs> you get your check, come home for Friday night, Shabbos dinner. Right? So, Kaddish Baruch who placed his tools in the toolbox, when? On the sixth day. And he wanted us to know this is what we should do. We imitate God. Just like he created the world in six days and then he ceased, he stopped creating. Now it's time to relax. This is what we're supposed to do. You came to my house Friday night. You came to my house Friday night? She came to someone's house Friday night. <laughs> first, first. Uh, one of them, one of them. Fine, so this is what you see. That's it. The buses stop running. The cars stop going. Right? People put their timer, their switches on. Whatever you cooked, you cooked. Okay. Yom, Yom Hashishi. Vayuchul Hashemayim. Now, I want you to look on these source sheets. If you look... In source number one, the last two words, it says the sixth day. 
And now, if you go and look, I hope I put it down here. Yeah. Genesis chapter 2 1. In other words, source number 7. Now the heavens and the earth were completed and all their hosts. There's a transition between the sixth day and the seventh day. Correct? When we stand up or we sit down, whatever, however your custom is for Kiddush, you hold the, the wine in your right hand and you say, right? You're going to say the words of Kiddush. There's a, you start off under your breath. You don't say it out loud. The era of the Hivoka. There was evening and there was morning. And out loud you say Yom Hashishi. And then you say Yehula Shemayim. Does it make any sense to say these two words out loud? Yom Hashishi? It's, they don't go with Yehula Shemayim. <laughs> Why do we do this? These Jews are uh, they're, they're a little bit, you know, out of the box. <laughs> they do some interesting things. What is v Yom Hashishi? I'll tell you. When you use the word Yom Hashishi, there's a, the first letter of those two words is Yud and Hey. And then Vayichulu Hashemayim, and the world was complete, right? The heavens were complete, is Vav Hey. Yeah. You're connecting the Yud Hey with the Vav Hey. Right? You're making the 26 complete. You hear this? So he says. You mention God's name. We're mentioning the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He through Yom Hashishi Vayichulu Hashemayim. Am I clear? As much. Okay. Maskim Lamasha Parashti Lamala Betam Kavav Doros. And this will agree with what he says earlier. Why there was 26 generations the earth was able to continue to, to uh, maintain itself. Ukthiep shot, according to simple explanation. Chatam ko masebreshis, b'shem shel ya. That God signs, it's as if his signature is in the creation of the world, which, which number, it's the yud and the hey. That's what was created, used to create the world. Hamishutaf bein ish isha. Wait till you hear this. I know when I used, was growing up, they had billboards. A family that prays together stays together. You ever hear such a thing? In the Christian uh, United States, on the highways. A family that prays together stays together. <coughs> they got it from us. Listen to these words. Ish, that's man. It's Aleph Yud Shin. Correct? So what is unique about the word ish is the yud. Why? Because isha is aleph shin he. God created woman. It's isha. It's the same aleph shin, except there's a he. By man, it's aleph shin with a yud. Aleph yud shin. So there's the yud and the he. If you have in your family God, the yud and the he, then you have a proper family. If, God forbid, the Yud and the He is not part of your life and your family, then what do you have? You only have the Aleph Shin. And what does Aleph Shin mean? Uh, fire. Double fire. Fire. Double what kind of fire? Double fire. Explosion. Double fire explosion. There you go. <coughs> this just relates back to the, in the man's name you have the Yud, in the female name you have the He. Now, I'm going to tell you, I should have told you in the beginning, we're going to talk about transgenderism and, um, diff yeah, 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 we're going to talk about, <laughs> so if you missed this in the beginning, we're going to, we're going to talk about um, identity, male or female identities, okay? So, let's get into it. So, Maskim Ladivrei Chazal in Baba Basra um, 74b, that every single thing that God created in the world, He created male and female. He created them. Okay? You heard it right here. Every single one of us has both male and female in us. Uh, where is that in the Gemara? 
Where did I say it's in Baba Basra? Did I, did I quote it here? Or I skipped it. Here, it's on the last page, page 11. The Gemara provides a mnemonic. Okay, we're not going to get into that every. Okay, fine. Where is it? Uh, Rav Yehuda says, Rav Yehuda says that Rav says, everything that the Holy One, blessed be He, created in the world, He created male and female. What is the character trait of male? Now, remember, so nobody pelts me with rocks here. Every one of us has a little bit of male and a little bit of female. Okay? And hopefully it's balanced correctly. The male is the giver, the provider, and the influencer, the one with the main influence. The woman is the receiver or the one being influenced. These are just concepts, okay? Concepts. <laughs> Let's go back into the Gemara, into the Kliakar. So he says, everything that God created in the world, he created male, with male and female aspects. As it says, now this is in Isaiah 26, verse 4. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah, the Lord, is the rock of eternity. But Olamim, if we look in the Hebrew, Bitchu ba'adonoi ad, right? Trust in the yud ke vav ke forever. Ki because it's in the yud he that Hashem is tzur olamim, created, formed the world. That's, that's how I would translate it, okay? Because that's the correct translation. Because I translate it like that. Isaiah, huh? Isaiah 26, verse 4. It's with the yud and the he that God created the world. That's how you would translate it. And we've already said, the Yud is the male, the He is the feminine. With Yud, He, God created everything. Everything has male and female. Everything. Except. <laughs> Except one thing. Okay, let's go through this. Okay, he goes like this. Ratzon Olamar, what do we mean by quoting this verse in Isaiah 26.4? Shekol Moshe Borah Ba'olam All that God created in this world, Yesh Bekulam Dimyon Hazachar Va'anakeva Ke'echad There is within it, within everything that's created in this world, male and female. So we're going to talk about four different worlds. The most highest world is God and God alone, and that's going to be strictly and only male. He only gives, he know he doesn't receive anything. He doesn't need anything. There's nothing for him to be influenced by. He's only an influencer and a provider. The next world is going to be the angels and the celestial bodies. They receive from Hashem, and then they have an effect on, let's just say, us, the humans. And then the humans receive... And we have an effect on the lower worlds. The lower worlds will say they should only be receivers, right? But no. Even in that world, there's male and female. The animals have male and female. They also procreate. They also give to each other. They also provide for each other. So they're not providing to any lower uh, world, but they're providing for each other. Okay, so let's read the words he brings down to us. Yesh um, dimyon. Okay, there is in all these worlds the male and female. Ki kol zacher dimyon el hamashpia, because all male. Remember, it doesn't mean physically male. It means the male concept is the mashpia, is the one doing the influencing. Kol nekeva. By the way, the word nekeva. That's the biblical usage for a female. It means a whole. It means a whole. H o l e. Nakuv is a whole. You just can't get around the Hebrew. I mean, what does that mean? <laughs> it's a whole. <laughs> okay. It's, it's something to be filled. It's something that has needs. Okay? Um, so he says like this. As the woman is the one who receives from the male. The kol hanivraim yesh bekulam sad echad mashpia v'tzad echad mushpa. Everything in creation has both aspects. We each human being, whether you're male or female, you have both aspects. Hakol ke'echad, and everything should be 
uh, unify Ketzad. Hare Kadesh Baruch Hu Mashpia Harishon. God is the first influence. Everything emanates from God. Hanoitin Imre Shefa El Olam Elyon. He, it's his Shefa, his 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 um, influence gives to that lower world, the, the celestial bodies. But he's not influenced by anything. There's nothing that God is influenced by. That upper celestial world then comes down and has a influence on the, the middle world, that's us. It comes out, So the celestial world has both male and female. So it is receiving its influence from Hashem. So not only does it receive, that, that one above us receives from the highest, but then it also provides for us. Sorry, that's us. That's the middle one. It's going to receive its providence or whatever from the celestial spheres and the angels. While we're also, even though we're masculine, feminine in the fact that we receive, I'll give you another thing. In the Torah itself, whenever the Jewish people, Israel, is referred to in relation to God, we're always female. The Jewish people are always female in relation to God. And whenever the Jewish people are in relation to the non-Jews, we're male. And they're female. Wow. <laughs> okay? I know Bob came back for that one. He took a little uh, break. Okay. So he goes on. If that's all the case, even our world, we have male and female. We have we need both aspects. Now, what about the lowest level, the animal world? We would expect them only to be only to be females. No, he he says they also have males. Even though they are being influenced and they don't have any influence. Here's another idea. Why would the animals need to be killed in the flood of Noach? They were innocent. What did they do? When, an, when an, a lion goes out and kills, or a hyena goes out and kills, is he guilty of murder? No. So what were these animals guilty of? Nothing. But they were influenced. It says man was doing bestiality. If man is involved in bestiality, that means they were affected by us, by our sins. And they had to be cleansed. There were uh, only the pure thoroughbreds went up on the ark, and all the other animals were mixed. They just had to be cleansed. Had, they weren't guilty of anything, they just had to be cleansed. Wiped out. Okay, we're, we're mamish on the last page. So what? Even though the lowest of lows you would think is just receiving and should only be female? No, they also have male. Because they need each other. They have to give to each other. Some of them give and some of them receive. So too, they also have male and female. Mamash. Uh, just like all the animals have both male and female but you know that they were not created like they were created male and female man was not created male and female do you know why man was not created male and female I mean this, uh, we say that male, the, this first man was actually created as two entities male and female together and then separated that's one way to look at it or we were created just as male and then God built female from man. But that's not how the animals were created. The animals were created male and female, like separate. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, the lesson God wants us to learn? Go for it. Try. No, no. Okay. The lesson thing we did, like, uh, the first was only one man. Everybody came from... from Again, the either, because there's the Medrash can explain it differently. Either a, not a Siamese twin, but front and back, 
there was a creation called man that was both male and female and then separated or it was just male and a rib not a rib but a part was taken off and built upon and now you have female but that's not how the animals were, we're different we're different than the animals right okay so the greatest gift right God put man to sleep and he wakes up and there she is <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, look, if it's really part of you, part of your soul, you share the same soul, you share and you become one flesh, it's like this is the missing part of you you've been looking your whole life for. So this is, it's the, not like a magnet that must come together, but it's a part of you that you're looking for to come together. There's a striving, there's a desire to, you, to become whole. Right? It's not good for man to be alone. If man was, let's say, not even alone, let's use the word complete. If man felt complete, like Asaph. Asaph was born with hair, like a full-grown person. There was no need for growth in his mind. Right? He's fully developed. So if you're alone, meaning it's not good for man to be alone, read it differently. It's not good for man to be um, What's feel complete and he doesn't need anyone he should have the need to feel companionship to, to grow to complete himself you understand? okay um, okay we're still talking about the lower world that each one is helping each other so this idea that man should not be alone man is broken that's really what he is he's a half a shekel he's a broken person <laughs> right it's only God who is not broken it's only God who is not um, it divide, divisible at all. There's no division for God at all. Okay? Here we go. So, Bilti Lashem Levado, it's only God. Biachis Torah Ish Levad. He's a mashpia, he's an influencer without being influenced. And this is what Chazal say in the Medrash. Okay, believe it or not, God is called a man, right? We just got to said man is the giver. Okay, God is not a man, but God is called a man. Where do we see that? Look in Exodus 15.3. The Lord is a master, right? The word man means master. That's you know, mister, right? Mister. So, <laughs> there's women in the room who try to be PC. No, it, <laughs> God is the master. God, God is called an ish. Look at the Hebrew. Ha Hashem ish milchama. Hashem shemo. It says in Hebrew, God is a man of war. We'll call it a master of war. God, good day, buffet. God is his name. Okay, Yud K. Buffet is his name. Meaning to say, We're not saying that there's a, a formation of a man. There's no physical form of man. He's called man because of his attribute of a giver. That's what we're talking about. A giver. Not that God forbid, God is a man. Um, bum, bum. We're talking about a giver, not a receiver. With, uh, right? Bilti Hashem Levado. Ki kulam srichim. Without God, Bilti Hashem Levado. Ki kulam srichim elav yisbrach. Everyone needs God. God does not need anyone. Here. The reason we find the word ish being used to refer to people is that it's not used to refer to someone intrinsically as an ish, but rather it's used metaphorically. That's what we're talking about all along. We're talking metaphorically in apposition with isha, as opposed to a woman. Male, then there's female. Right? Everyone has a little bit of male and female in them, but you're a female, so that's your general category. That's who you are. Okay. <clears throat> However, the noun ish its intrinsic meaning is that he's a giver. And that you have to live up to that. So you men out here who are not married or not happily married, get on the, the bandwagon and start making your wives happy by giving to them. This is your job. Okay, you have to be a giver. 
Okay? And this ultimate ish is Hashem. Right? We saw the verse. Um, that can be attributed only to Hashem. Hashem is not female at all. He's pure male. We're, we're in essence, we're not talking about physically male. Therefore, in the sixth day, it says Yom Hashishi, whose initials we said is Yud and Hey. Yom, the Yud, Hashishi, and the Hey. Right, so the Yud and the Hey are, are in the names Ish and Isha. That's what it's there for. To indicate that God created everything with both male and female attributes. Therefore, in this world, we do not use God's full name. We don't use that full name. And the reason we don't use the full name is because there's another verse that says, this is my name forever. Right? That's what it says, my name forever. But what people fail to realize, they look in the Hebrew. The word forever is spelled normally olam. But this word is missing the vav. Elam. Elam means silent. Don't say it. This is my name not to be pronounced. That's what God is telling us in the Torah. Not yet when the Mashiach comes, when the sixth day of create, when the 60,000 years is finished and we have entered into uh, the messianic times, then everyone will know Hashem and the, the name will flow. But until then, I am hidden. Okay? Look at the word. This is my name forever. Yud Ke Vav Ke. The word Olam, which means forever, it's spelled without a Vav. Elam means hidden. So we don't use that word. But Yud He, Ya, we do use. In the world to come, which is described as a day that is all Shabbos, you experience Shabbos, it's a taste of the world to come. It's just a fraction, one sixtieth of eternal, eternal Shabbos. Then we will use the name. We will use the name then. Um, in, um, in Tehillim, one fifteen seven. It says, Lo hamesim yehalleluyah. The dead do not praise the Yud and the Hay. <clears throat> that is, those who died will be revived in the world to come. They're not going to be using the Yud and the Hay. They're going to be using the Yud and the Hay and the Vav and the Hay. So the dead do not praise Yah. The living will praise Yud, Hay, Vav, Hay. Okay, the dead, sorry, again, the dead will be resurrected. And the dead will not be praising yud Hey, they'll be praising yud Hey vav Hey when they get resurrected. Clear as day? Okay. Therefore, the letters, the Vav and the Hey, are hinted at in the initials of Vayichulu HaShemayim. As we mentioned, Yom HaShishi, Vayichulu HaShemayim. All together, it's yud Hey vav Hey. The, he completed the heavens, which describe the day of the revealed Shabbos. That's the Shabbos day we observe in this world. But alludes to that which is hidden, to the day that's all Shabbos in the world to come. To teach us that at that time, his name will be complete. Once Shabbos comes in, right, the whole wide world is waiting for Shabbos. Similarly, David Amelech himself concluded, Bar Chinafshi, look at... Um, Psalms 104, the last, sinners will be destroyed from the earth. When will that be? We don't even translate as sinners, but sin. Sin will be destroyed from the earth, and their wicked will be no more. That means there won't be anybody sinning. All the sinners will have died, everyone will have done tshuva, repentance, and now my soul will bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And he doesn't say, yud hey, it's yud ke vav ke. You see it? It's number 13. Yitamu chatoi min aretz. Rishayim od enam. Bar chinavshi es Hashem. Yudke vavke. Hallelujah. And that is how we're going to end. Looking forward to the time, the days of Mashiach, for his speedily, speedily arrival. Right? We're looking forward to that day. And I wish you all welcome home to Torah. Have a Shabbat Shalom. This is Parshas Breshis. I think this was a great way to begin the year with some insights into the Torah.
Hallelujah. Yeah.